Hello everyone, welcome to game number 49 in the Washington Nationals replay. This is game number three of four against the Mets here at City Field. The teams have split the first two games. Last game, of course, Zach Wheeler pitched that uh, seven shutout innings and the despite seven in good innings from Eric Fetty, the Mets beat the Nationals one to nothing. So now we on paper, anyway, it looks like a very good pitching matchup between Max Scherzer and Jacob deGrom, but that's why you play the games. All right, let's look at the standings heading into today's game. Washington's in first place at 28-20. and 20. Atlanta is in second place, two and a half back. Philadelphia is three back. The Mets, three and a half, and Miami, ten and a half. A couple of player changes or roster changes, one for each team. For the Nationals, Matt Adams is activated off the injury list, and Adrian Sanchez is sent to AAA. For the Mets, Brandon Nimmo goes on the injured list and Rajay Davis is activated. So those are the two changes that they have. We'll go through the starting lineups in just a moment. Let's get the dice tray in place and make sure everything is lining up. Okay, so Jacob deGrom, this, he's had nine starts so far. He is 5-1 and one with a 2.37 ERA. 64 and two-thirds innings, 47 hits, 17 runs. They were earned, 12 walks, 76 strikeouts. And the lineup he will be facing, Trey Turner at short, Eaton in right, Rendon at third, Soto in left, Adams at first, Suzuki behind the plate, Dozier at second, Robles in center, and Scherzer on the mound. Defensively for the Mets, Davis is in left. That's J.D. Davis, not Rajay Davis. This is J.D. Davis. Put the J here just so I get that. Don't get them confused. That's J.D. Davis. Lagares in center, Gomez in right, Frazier at third, Rosario at short, Cano at second, Alonzo at first, and behind the plate is Thomas Nitto giving Wilson Ramos the day off. All right, Nationals on the bench. They have Parra, Kendrick, Taylor, and Gomes available. And in the bullpen for the Mets, they have two lefties, Santiago and Zamora available, and they have Giselman, Gagnon, Bachelor, Familia, and Diaz in the bullpen. Now, of course, in the last game, they had a save situation, but Nikki Calloway decided to go with Giselman to finish the game out and not trust Edwin Diaz. So we'll see if there's any lingering effects where Diaz gets a little iffy going forward. We shall see. All right, so Jacob deGrom finishing the warm-up tosses, and he'll be facing Trey Turner to lead off here in the Game 3 of the series. Trey Turner... Really been struggling. He's hitting 237, no homers, and four driven in. And we're underway from City Field. 5-2 is double question mark right off the bat. But for DeGrom, that's a blank. So nothing happening there. Trey Turner, 2-6, star four. That is a grounder to short. And Rosario throws him out. Just that quickly, one away. Brings up Adam Eaton, the right fielder. He's hitting 278. Six homers, 29 driven in. Grom, 4-6 is a strikeout plus, and he got him. Oops, that's two down now. And that'll send us to Anthony Rendon, hitting 304, nine homers and 24 driven in. 6-6, six, six, automatic out on a star line. Let's see what the out is. It is a fly to center to end the inning. So one, two, three inning for the Nats, and they go quietly. We go to the bottom of the first. Nationals nothing. Mets coming to bat. And Max Scherzer on the mound for the Nationals. And we'll look at his numbers heading into this start. On the replay, he's had 10 starts. He's 6-3 with a 2.01 ERA. 71 and two-thirds innings, 58 hits, 17 runs, 16 earned, 14 walks, and 99 strikeouts. So one more will get the 100th strikeout. For the Mets, their lineup, Rosario leads off at short, Davis, Cano, Alonzo, then Frazier, Gomez, Lagares, Nitto, and DeGrom. On the bench, they have uh, Jeff McNeil and Dominic Smith from the left side, Rajay Davis, Hechevarria, and Ramos from the right side. In the Nats bullpen, available to them, they have three lefties, Grace, Sip, and Doolittle, and three righties, Guerra, Suero, and Ross. And I think maybe Bearclaw. Did I forget to write Bearclaw? Let's see. He can be forgetful. It's easy to not want to write him down, so I did forget Bearclaw. 
So they actually have that seventh reliever there. I think that's all they, oh, Rainey, I almost forgot him too. So they actually have eight relievers in the bullpen, but they're, most of them are so bad we like to forget about them anyway. So eight relievers available for the Nationals. And defensively for the Nationals, Soto in left, Robles in center, Eaton in right, Rendon at third, Turner at short, Dozier at second, Matt Adams at first, and Suzuki behind the plate. All righty. And apparently something happened there with the focus when I was moving stuff around, so I'm trying to get this focus to improve. I think that just did it, hopefully. All right. Adam Rosario, or Ahmed Rosario, rather, will lead it off for the Mets. And on the replay, he's hitting 267, two homers, and 17 driven in. And Max Scherzer looking for strikeout 100 early on. 5-1 is a walk plus to a lefty, but to a righty, it's blank. Rosario, 6-6. Six, six, he will ground to third. Rendon puts it away, one down. That'll send up second man in the order, J.D. Davis. Left fielder hitting 317, five homers, 21 driven in. 4-3, strikeout plus. Seven got him. That's strikeout number 100. J.D. Davis is the 100th victim of Max Scherzer. Strikeout there. Here's Robinson Cano hitting 316, 10 homers, 41 driven in. 2-6, strikeout, but 18 is too high. Go to Cano. 2-2, two, two, ground ball to short, innings over. 1-2-3 inning for Max Scherzer and the Nats. We go to the second, no score. And on paper, like I said, it's set up to be a good pitching duel, but you never know. We just had a 1-0 game, so not likely we can repeat that, but you, you know, you know, like I said, you never know. You gotta, that's why you play the games. All right, so Juan Soto is going to lead it off for the Nationals. He's hitting 284, 11 homers, 31 RBIs. There's 11 homers and 31 RBIs both lead the team. 2-3 for DeGrom is a potential error on a ground ball. Go to Soto, 3-2. Ground ball to second, that's Cano. He's got an error rating of 4. That's an 11, so Cano will easily make that play. And there's two uh, one away right away here in the second. Brings up Matt Adams, fresh off the injured list. He's ready to go. Before he went on the injured list, he was really raking. 266, six homers, and 13 RBI. And that's only in 64 at bat. So he was really raking early on before he got injured. They can definitely use his bat in the lineup. It strengthens their bench. DeGrom to Adams, 1-1, one, one, potential error. 3-1, that's a single to center field. 14, there is no error there, but it will be a one-out single for Matt Adams. Not really a threat to steal. In fact, he has no attempt, and there's no pickoff for DeGrom, so there's no strategy roll needed. Here's Kurt Suzuki. He's hitting 321, four homers, and 17 driven in. Get a 6-6. Six, six. That's the automatic out. See what the out is. It's a four. Ground ball to short. Could be a double play. He's a three. Nothing there. They're in halfway. Makes it a four. No pivot. So it's one to four for a double play. And they turn it. Six, four, three. To end the inning. Just what the doctor ordered. No runs, a hit, no errors, and nobody left. So we go to the bottom of the second. No score. And Pete Alonzo will be leading things off for the Mets against Scherzer. Alonzo, the home run in the previous game was the only run of the game. He was the difference. He is why they scored the one run. So the Mets now have sh shut out the Nationals for 11 consecutive innings going back to the last game. So doing really well pitching wise. Alonzo, 274, 15 homers, 30 RBI. Scherzer, 3-4, strikeout plus and he got him. That's a 10. The plus is a 20. That's a 21. That is a 20. So Alonzo strikes out. Brings up the Todd father, Todd Frazier, hitting 238. One homer, 11 driven in. 6 1. Uh, blank versus a right hander. Frazier, 4 6. He's going to single to center field. 
First hit of the game for the Mets. It's a one-out single by Frazier. He has no attempt, so no strategy roll. Gomez, the batter, hitting 077. He's 1 for 13 on the season with no homers or runs driven in. 4-1, he's not tired, so there's no single. Gomez, 6-2, question mark 8. That's a 5. That will be a double for Gomez. How about that? A double for Gomez. Double to, I believe it was center field. Yes, a double to center field. So check the run chances here. You gain one trying to score from first. Frazier runs at a 3. You gain one, makes it a 4. Robles is a minus 1, makes him a 3. 1-3, one to three, he scores. He has to hold. So Frazier holds at third base. But now runners are at second and third with one out, and they're going to bring the infield in. They expect runs to be at a premium, so they're bringing the infield in against Ligaris. Ligaris hitting 267, no homers, 14 driven in. Scherzer needs a strikeout. 2 3. It's a range play with the infield in. If it's hit to an infielder, they're going to lose two off of their range. Here's Ligaris. 2 4. That's a ground ball to third, so Rendon drops from a 4 to a 2. He drops down to a 2, so he's got to have a 1 or a 2 to get to this. He does not. He would have gotten to it otherwise. He would have got the ground out to, and the run would have scored. But instead, it's an S5 through the drawn in infield. And the Mets take the lead. Now, will Gomez score from second is the question. On an S5, you have to have a, you have to have a 5 to score. He does not. He's only a, a 3. So Gomez will stop at third base. But runners are now on the corners. And the Mets now lead it one to nothing through the drawn-in infield. So RBI single from Lagares, one nothing Mets. Lagares does have an attempt of two. Nothing happening. Here's Thomas Nitto. Infield. Now looking for the double play. They're at the corners looking for the double play. Traditional double play. 3-5 is a possible error on a throw. Nitto, 1-6. He's going to double to left field. Wow. A double by Thomas Nitto. And that's going to definitely score Gomez from third, obviously. Question is, will it score Ligaris? 14, there is no error on the throw by Soto, but we're going to check the run rating of Ligaris, who runs at a 4. To score on a double to left, you lose one. That makes him a 3. And Soto's a 0. So it's a 1 to 3 for Ligaris to score. And he does. So Ligaris scores. It's a two-run double by backup catcher Thomas Nito, or Nito. And it's 3 nothing. 3 nothing. Mets and Max Scherzer getting a little perturbed. I think when the ground ball went to Rendon and he couldn't get it, it went through. I think it kind of threw him off his game. He lost his concentration. And Groove won to Nimmo, and Nimmo made, or Nito rather, and Nito made him pay for it. Nimmo's on the injured list. It's Nito, or Nito. All right, that'll bring up DeGrom, and he will swing away. Scherzer, 5 3. DeGrom's a left handed hitter, even though he's a right handed pitcher, so it will not be a strikeout plus. It'll be a blank. DeGrom to swing, 4 5. He grounds it back to the pitcher. Two down. Now, can the runner advance? Well, if his Base running rating exceeds a D6 roll. He could. However, Nitto, I think, probably runs at a 1. And he does. <laughs> so this has to be... Of course, there's now two outs. So that makes him, a, I guess, a 2. Let's see if he makes it. Nope, he doesn't make it. He has to hold it second. So there's two down as DeGrom grounds to Scherzer, which freezes the runner. Two down for Rosario. 2-5, that's a strikeout chance. 15's too much. Rosario, a 3-4, star 6. That's a fly to right to end the inning. But damage done, particularly by the backup catcher Nitto with that two-run double. We have three runs on four hits. No errors and a man left. We go to the third. It is the Mets 3 and the Nationals nothing. And Jacob deGrom has been handed a three-run lead on a silver platter. 
And that looks pretty ominous when you're having to face DeGrom. All right, Dozier will lead it off. It's bottom of the order. Dozier, Robles, and Scherzer. Dozier hitting 258, five home runs, 16 driven in. 6-5, that's the ballpark card going to City Field for the first time. One, uh, why did I roll a one? I got to roll everything, not just the one. My bad. <laughs> Let's try again. 4-2, and that's a question mark seven, but that's a 20. So that's going to be a fly out to left by Dozier. One away. I don't know what I was thinking, rolling just the D20 by itself. That was kind of weird. But anyway, it is a fly to left as Dozier couldn't quite get all of it. Here's Robles. He's hitting 197. Three homers, 20 driven in. Grom, 1-5. Strikeout plus, and he got him. Thanks to the plus that even though it's a 20, he still got him. So that's two down. For Max Scherzer, who's obviously not a bad hitting pitcher. He's been used as a pinch hitter several times and has gotten hits. Grom, 5-5, five, five, stri strikeout chance, 12, got him, but he's still a pitcher, so he's going to strike out here. Three up and three down go the Nats here in the top of the third. We go to the bottom of the third, still 3 nothing Mets. And that takes us to J.D. Davis, Cano, and Alonzo, heart of the order. Mad Max trying to shake off that rough second inning. Mets looking for more, smell blood. Scherzer, 3-3, strikeout plus. Scherzer says, smell this. One down. Guess you can smell what the Max is cooking. All right, here's Robinson Cano. 5-2, that's a walk plus, so that will be a base on balls to Cano. One down, here is Alonzo with Cano at second. I'm sorry, at first, rather, he has no attempt. Scherzer to, to uh, Alonzo, 3-1 is a walk chance, so back-to-back uh, -back walks issued by Scherzer. Puts runners at first and second with one out. And the Todd father, Todd Frazier, coming up. 3-4, strikeout plus, and he got him. He needed that. Two down. For Carlos Gomez, but Gomez did double his last time up. That really got the ball rolling. When he doubled. Scherzer, 5-6, strikeout plus. He won't double this one. So Scherzer strikes out the side. He walks two, but he strikes out the side. And we go to the fourth. Still 3 nothing Mets. But if you're Scherzer, you're thinking three runs, maybe the game may be over already with DeGrom pitching. But, and of course, with your offense struggling now, it's 12 consecutive innings here at, in this series that they have not scored. Um, going back, let's see, did they, yeah, they scored in the ninth inning of the previous game. So nine innings in the previous game plus the three here. So 12 consecutive innings the Nationals have not scored against Mets pitching. Most of that Zach Wheeler and Jacob DeGrom. Here is Turner. 3-2, and that's potential error on throw. Turner, 2-5. He's going to ground it to third. Frazier's an 8. That's a 17, so Frazier... Not a problem. A little bit in the dirt, but scooped up by Alonzo. Nice pick at first base. One down. Here's Adam Eaton. 4-1 strikeout chance, and he got him. Another strikeout by DeGrom. DeGrom now with four Ks. Here's Rendon. 1-5 strikeout plus, and he got him. No, he didn't. I take it back. Rendon's a 5. That's a 6. The plus is a 16, but that's a 17. So he did not get him. Rendon, check swing, was called a ball. So he will continue to at bat. 5-6. He's going to ground it to Rosario anyway to end the inning. So nothing doing there. Another 1-2-3 inning by Jacob deGrom. He seems to be large and in charge. 3 nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the order, Ligaris, Nitto, and Negrom, but that was the area that did damage last inning, or first time through the order, so can't rest if you're sure, or you got to bear down. 3-6, strikeout plus, and he did just that. So strikeout there. Brings up Thomas Nitto. He had that double. 
Only a 191 hitter, but he had that double right there in the, in the one six position. In fact, it's the only double on his card, other than the question mark double. But it's the only straight up double on his card, and he found it. Scherzer now, 2-6 strikeout. He says, find that. Finding Nitto, he found a strikeout. And for Scherzer now, that is strikeout number seven. So seven strikeouts in a little bit less than four innings. If he could strike out the ground, be eight and four innings. That would be something, but the three runs are something else too. Scherzer, 4-2, hit, I'm sorry, strikeout chance, and he does he does get him. It's 12 plus the one's the 13, so he does get him. He strikes out the side. Strikeout number eight for Scherzer in four innings, but he's on the losing end of a three-nothing ball game. So that rough second inning, he's come back nicely, but maybe too late. Grom facing Soto, but ever since the Nationals came back from down eight nothing against the Cubs with nine runs in the eighth inning, I haven't counted any game over yet in inside pitch because anything is liable to happen. Here's Juan Soto. He grounded to second his first trip. 2-4, strikeout plus. He got him. So DeGrom with another strikeout, and the strikeouts are coming in full force now. For DeGrom, that is strikeout number five. Here's Matt Adams. 4-2, that's a blank against a lefty. Adams, 6-1, and against a right-hander, he's going to single. So Matt Adams is the only one that has figured out Mr. DeGrom, he's two for two. Of course, Suzuki hit into a double play his last time after he got the single, so sure, uh, DeGrom has faced the minimum so far. Let's see what happens here against Suzuki. 3-3 three, three is a blank, so we go to Suzuki's card. 5-5, five, five, ground to third, could be another double play. He's a three, halfway makes it a four. One to four is a double play chance. No, five. They don't turn it this time. Not quite in time. They do force Adams, five to four, but Cano cannot get the relay in time. So it will be a fielder's choice, five to four. Two down. Suzuki, the new runner, but he has no attempt either. So he will not be going anywhere. And that will send us to Dozier. One, one, possible error. 5-2, question mark, 7. That's a 14. He just missed it. That's up to a 13. Would have been a double, but 14 is just going to be a fly to left. And the inning is over. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 3-0 Mets. And now that's 14 consecutive scoreless innings by the Nationals offense. As they have definitely hit... A big time team collective slump. And, and Scherzer kind of had to figure that because he hasn't been getting run support all year long. Top of the order for Rosario is 0 for 2. 6 5. That's a home run question mark. It's a right hander. That passes. Rosario 1 to 5, and it will, go, it will be gone. 18 is not going to do it, but he does get the swing. Oops. Duh, need to swing, throw all the dice. 6-4, split chances to fly to center against the right-hander Scherzer. So he just missed the home run. Deep fly to center that Robles hauls in at the track. One down. J.D. Davis, he struck out twice. Scherzer, 3-3, three, three, struck out plus, and he got him. So that's the hat trick for J.D. Davis. And that's strikeout number nine for Max Scherzer. Here's Robinson Cano. He's walked and grounded to short. 5-2 is a walk plus. He's going to walk again. So Cano with the two-out walk. He has no attempt. And now the dangerous Pete Alonzo. He has struck out and walked 0 for 1. 3-4, strikeout plus, and he got him. So Scherzer, strikeout number 10 in five innings. He has struck out 10, but he's on the losing end of a 3-0 game. Now we go to the 6th. DeGrom can face 25 batters. He's only faced 16, so he's in great shape as far as that goes. It'll be Robles, Scherzer, and Turner due up against DeGrom. 
3-5, and that's a straight-up home run chance, and that is gone. Victor Robles just homered off of DeGrom, straight up. That's an 8, that's a 1. Home run for Robles, his fourth homer of the season, 21st RBI. And the Nationals finally break that scoreless streak. At It ends finally at 14 innings. As Robles hits a homer, it's a solo homer, so they're still down 3-1, to one, but at least it gets that goose egg off the board, and that can be psychological. So here is Max Scherzer, the batter now. 6-6 six, six star line, that will be an automatic out. And it will be a grounder to Alonzo at first base, one down. Flip the order over to Trey Turner. 2-1, that's a strikeout chance, but 20 is too high. 1-6, that's a double to left field for Trey Turner. Two out double. Actually, sorry, one out double. So Turner is aboard. I'm not going to... Well, you know what? They're going to see if he can get a jump to steal third because DeGrom doesn't hold runners well. He's a plus two and he's a six. That's an attempt rating of eight. Yeah, but he can't get a jump. He can't quite figure him out. So he'll stay put. And here's Adam Eaton. Four, three is a range play at City Field. Two, two. That's a home run to center field. That's a 14. It fails, but it's a range check. So the range of Lagares is a three. If he doesn't get to this, it will be a double. One to three is out. Four, five, six, it's a double. And he gets to it. So how about that? He makes the catch for out number two. Can Turner tag and move up? Turner's a three, but you lose three. And Lagares is a minus two, so he cannot move up. He has to hold at second base. So nice play out there by Lagares. Potentially saving a run. Here's Rendon. He's 0 for 2. We've got a big spot right here. 1 3. Home run question mark. 1 to 3. That fails. So Rendon will get the swing, but not for a homer. 1 1. Question mark 8. Only goes to 15. That's an 18. So again, another deep fly to center field, but comes up just a little bit empty. Nationals get 1, but I think they were looking for more. Felt like they could have got more. One run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the six. It's three to one Mets. But at least they found that DeGrom does have some chinks in the armor. Scherzer back out will face Todd Frazier, the Todd father. He's one for two with a strikeout. Five, three, strikeout plus another strikeout for Scherzer. That is strikeout number 11. Here's Carlos Gomez. 1-4 is a range play at City Field. 6-6, six, six, that's a ground ball to second. The range of Dozier is only a 2. You can't get it. Space it. Base hit for Gomez. He's got an attempt of 5. And he will get a chance to steal. He's a 16. Plus one's a 17, plus two is a 19. So anything other than a 20, he's safe. And he's in there, stolen base. Stolen base for Gomez. So Gomez singles and then steals second base. Gets himself into scoring position with one out for Juan Lagares. One three for Scherzer, strikeout chance, but 15's too much. Lagares, 5-4, is going to ground to second. That'll move the runner to third. So Gomez will take third on the ground ball to second. And with two outs now, that brings up Nitto. They could walk Nitto intentionally and pitch to DeGrom, but DeGrom actually has a better average than Nitto does. They're thinking that double was just an anomaly, so they're just going to go ahead and pitch to Nitto. Scherzer, 5-5, ballpark card. We're going to City Field. 3-1, fly to left. That's going to end the inning. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. After six complete, it's the Mets 3, Nationals 1. Jacob DeGrom back out. DeGrom will be leading off next inning, so let's see how he's doing on his fatigue. He has faced 21 batters. He can face 25, so this may be his last inning. 
and most likely will be. And then we get to the battle of bullpens, which is never good for either team. All right, so DeGrom facing Soto. Soto 0 for 2. 2-3, two, possible error on a ground ball. Soto, 5-6, he's going to pop it to first, so no error to worry about. Alonzo squeezes it, one away. Brings up Matt Adams, who has, like I said, been one of the few that have figured out DeGrom. He's 2-for-2 two two with two singles. 6-1, six, one, ball one. So we'll try again. 6-6, six, six, that's an automatic out, so he won't figure him out this time. This time it's a ground ball to short. Rosario takes care of it. Two down for Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki, the batter, 0 for 2. He is hitting to a double play and hitting to a fielder's choice. 1 5, strikeout plus, he is gone. Another 1 2 3 inning for DeGrom. And boy, Mickey Calloway is going to have to face some decisions if they take him out now. Now, he has faced 20. He has faced 24 batters. He can face 25. I think you got to let him stay in there. The way their bullpen is, I just don't trust it. So they're going to keep DeGrom in and let him hit. He's actually not a bad hitter at 200 for a pitcher. That's not bad. So DeGrom will swing away. Scherzer can face 26 batters. He has faced 26, so he is now tired. So he is, anything he hits on the uh, fatigue check, he will have to come out. 5-1. And that's going to be a walk plus. And how about that? But it won't be a walk because he's a 7. The plus is a 17, but that's a minus 1. It's a 16. That's an 18. So DeGrom does not draw the walk. DeGrom will swing, though, and he flies to right. One down. So Scherzer just avoids walking the opposing pitcher. Here's Rosario. Nationals do have action in the bullpen. Wander Suero is loosening along with Tony Sip. Righty and lefty double barrel action just in case Scherzer hits that fatigue chance. 5-1 is another blank. Go to Rosario. 3-4, and that's a star six fly to right. So again, Eaton puts it away. Two up and two down for J.D. Davis. 5-6, strikeout plus, and he got him. That's, that's an even dozen, and J.D. Davis has the golden sombrero. 0 for 4 with three with four strikeouts. And we go to the eighth, still three to one Mets. And Scherzer just can't catch a break on run support, that is for sure. DeGrom's gonna come back out. He's gonna face Dozier. Robles and a pinch hitter for Scherzer. And Scherzer's day is done. And it appears. You got one lefty and a bunch of righties, so I think you might just have the right-hander come in anyway. Let's see who they want to have come in. Actually, they're going to have Tanner Rainey. Tanner Rainey is going to be the one to come in, not Swero, but it's going to be Tanner Rainey in the bottom of the eighth. But first things first, we have Dozier, and we have Robles, and then we need a pinch hitter, and Gerardo Parra has already picked up a bat. So it will be Parra to pinch hit. The only lefty on the bench for the Nationals. So it will be Dozier, Robles, and Parra. Keep in mind, DeGrom is fatigued, so if he hits a fatigue roll, he will have to come out. So in the Mets bullpen, they do have Jairus Familia loosening. Just Selman pitched an inning and two-thirds in the last game, so they probably don't want to use him unless they have to. So Familia is loosening in the bullpen, but right now it is DeGrom to Dozier. 4-6. That is a strikeout plus. Another strikeout for DeGrom. They're going to ride him until he falls, I think. Here's Robles. 4-2. That's a potential walk, and he will not walk him. That's too high. Robles gets to swing. 2-4 flies to center. That's two down. And now Gerardo Parra, the batter, is officially now Scherzer has left the game with Parra coming in. Parra on the season, hitting 250, four homers and 16 driven in. Grom, 6-5. That's the ballpark card going to City Field. 
5-4, and that is a rare play. So base is empty, rare play book we go. Two outs and the base is empty. Two outs and base is empty. Roll into two D6s. We get a three. So rare play, base is empty, and a three, and there are two outs. Catcher's interference. Umpire rules that the catcher's mitt interfere with the batter's bat as bad or fouled pitch. Batter's awarded first base and catcher is charged with an error. So how about that? We have our first catcher's interference that I'm aware of in this game, or in most any game, and Corrado Parra makes it. That'll be an error charge to Nitto on the catcher's interference. You don't see that happen very often. As the runner now gets, oops, let's put this in correctly. A little tricky on the Strat computer, but Hararo Parra reaches on the catcher's interference. Now Parra's got an attempt of four plus the two there is a six, but he cannot get the jump. So Parra has to stay put. He has a three base running rating, so they won't pinch run for him. Trey Turner, the batter. DeGrom, 2-1, strikeout chance, got him. Now that may be it for DeGrom. I think the eight innings is going to do it. But he goes out in style. No runs, no hits, one error, and one left. Go to the bottom of the eighth. It is still 3-1, Mets. And we've got Cano leading off. And Tanner Rainey will be coming on for the Nationals. We'll have to do the numbers on, let's do the numbers on Scherzer and DeGrom, both, so we can see how they did. Both pitched pretty well. One bad inning for Scherzer cost him. First, we'll do the numbers on DeGrom. DeGrom goes eight innings. He surrenders four hits and a run, which was earned, which was the home run to Robles. Walked none and struck out eight. So a solid, solid outing there for sure. And now for Max Scherzer, he's going to go seven innings, give up five hits and three runs. And he walks three, strikes out 12. He is now at 111 strikeouts on the season in 17 walks in 78 and two-thirds innings. But... He's going to find himself dropping to six and four, most likely, with an ERA hovering just above two. But that's just the way it's been for him. So now we go to the, oops, might as well stay over here. Bottom of the eighth we go. Tanner Rainey is on for the Nationals. And we'll check the numbers on Rainey. On the replay, he is 0 and 1. With a 20.25 ERA, he's only pitched one inning, giving up four hits, two walks, two strikeouts. So he hasn't had a large enough sample size, really. So this is another inning for him to try to improve on that, facing Cano, who's walked twice. 4-5, that's a strikeout plus, and he got him. So Rainey with the strikeout. Brings up Pete Alonzo. He has struck out twice and walked. Rainey, 4-1, strikeout plus, got him again. So Rainey, that's the hat trick for Alonzo. So the Met batters have now struck out 14 times, but they got all three, they got the four hits right there clumped together. Four of their five hits were all clumped in the same inning that produced three runs. So it's not how many you get, it's when you get them. Here's Frazier, he struck out twice as well, one for three. Rainey, 2-3 is a double question mark. 1-11 to is an automatic out, but that's a 20. So Frazier will swing, 3-5, and he's going to single past Turner. So a two-out single for Frazier. He's aboard. He has no attempt. We'll have a pickoff chance for Rainey, but nothing's happening. Here's Gomez. He is had a good day. He's two for three, single and a double, run scored, and a stolen base. 5-5 five, five is the ballpark card, so we're going to City Field. For Gomez, 4-1 is a home run to the pull side, but that's an 18. He's only an 8, so it's actually going to be a fly to left, a deep fly to left to end the inning. So Rainey just missed giving up a big 
two-run homer there, but he pitches one inning. He gives no runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. We go to the ninth, and I know it's not popular by Met fans, but we're bringing in Edwin Diaz to try to save the game. See if he can make up for past sins. So Edwin Diaz is on to try to save it. Jacob DeGrom, masterful outing. Eight innings, only allowing the one run. So Edwin Diaz is aboard to pitch. Met fans kind of groaning in the, sta in the stands. Not booing, but certainly groaning. And let's see, do they want to bring in a better... Actually, they're going to have a double, they have a double switch. Yeah, they're going to have a double switch here. So let's get the double switch going. Because J.D. Davis is not a very good outfielder. Rajay Davis uh, is a two, but... Even better than that, let's see, Dominic Smith is a four. Uh, let's see, let me double check here. Roger Davis is a two, but Dominic Smith is a four. So Dominic Smith, even though he's got a high error rate, his range is a four. So Dominic Smith's going to come on. So let's do the double switch here. Dominic Smith will take over in left field uh, in bat ninth. And coming out of the game is J.D. Davis and that is where Diaz will come in to pitch. So double switch there, not necessarily for any profound thing, just want better defense, and if you can bump the pitcher down a couple spots, I guess that helps too. So J.D. Davis has been removed from the game. Smith will hit third in the order, or ninth in the order, but third if they go to a bottom of the ninth. But J.D. Davis has been replaced. All right, so let's get all of that information in the computer. Dominic Smith now in left field batting ninth. And Edwin Diaz on to try to save it for the Mets. He has a two-run lead to protect. On the replay, Diaz one and three with five saves, but his ERA is 9.53. 17 innings pitched, 22 hits, and he's given up seven home runs. He's also walked 12 in those 17 innings. So definitely, as Tom Cruise would say, definitely risky business. It'll be Eaton, Rendon, and Soto. Heart of the order, just what Diaz wanted. He gets to face the heart of the order to try to get a grown man's save right here. Well, it's not really a grown man's save because he does have a run to work with. So. So we'll see. Eaton 0 for 3 with 2 Ks, but that was all against DeGrom. Diaz 5-4. Five, 5-4 four. Five, four against a lefty. It's a strikeout plus, so he strikes out Eaton. And it's the hat trick for Adam Eaton. And a mock cheer coming from the City Field crowd. One away for Anthony Rendon. He's 0 for 3. Diaz 5-6. Double question mark. 1-17 to 17 is a hit. That is a 17. So Rendon, a one-out single. And now some murmuring coming from the stands here at City Field as the tying run has made it to the plate in the form of Juan Soto. Diaz has to bear down. Rendon has an attempt of one plus one from Diaz. So he's got an attempt of two to steal. And he's got a one, so he's going to try to steal it. Why not? He's a 17 Plus one is an 18, plus two is a 20. So the only way he's out is a 20. Anything else, one through 19, and he will be at second base to take away the double play. And he's in there. Stolen base for Anthony Rendon. He had five on the season. This one here is probably his first, I would think. So stolen base for Rendon. And that'll bring up Soto now. Diaz to Soto. 1 2, strikeout plus. Got him. So Diaz gets the strikeout. And the Nationals are one out away from losing their second in a row. Diaz now will face Matt Adams. 2 6, strikeout plus to the lefty. He got him. So Diaz strikes out the side. 
and maybe gives his manager some more confidence for the Nationals. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. Diaz gets the save with three strikeouts. He did give up the hit and a stolen base, but he did strike out three. And so the ball game is over. Mets have won now two in a row to cut the Nationals' lead over them to two and a half in the division. And let's get the totals from the box score. For the Mets, three runs, six hits, one error. They left on six. For the Nationals, one run on five hits, no errors, and four left. Winning pitcher is Jacob deGrom. He is now... Six and one. And the loser is Scherzer. He's six and four. Diaz with the save records save number six. So that's going to do it from here. Game three in the books, the final of the series coming up in game 50. And it will be. As we look ahead to game 50, it will be Strasburg and Steven Matz that will be coming up. And after that, they will come home to play the Marlins. So final score here to Grom, another brilliant outing. Gets the win with eight innings of solid pitching. They win it three to one. Cut the lead that the Nationals have over them to two and a half games. Three in the loss column, but two and a half overall. And that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of Inside Pitch. Another pitching duel, as was expected, with these two pitchers in the game. So kind of nice to have two pitching duels after a couple of wacky games. Get some stability back in this thing here. And till, till the next game, which most likely will be the final game of the series, because I still haven't figured out what I want to do besides this, whether I want to do something with payoff pitch or do something with strat or history maker or whatever. Um, on the side. I haven't really decided. So for now, I'm just going to stick with this and plug along in these games. So until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.